Maguro at magulang ating pagtulungan Kabataan ay turuan natin Kahit na nasa tahanan Pagkaaral ay tutukan Oras at kasanayan ay ilaan Tulong eto kalidad Magbago man ang panahon Ipagpatuloy ating layunin Patatagin ang edukasyon Itulay ang gabay sa pagkatuto Itulay edukasyon itatawid sa iyo Itulay paaralan di lalayo sa iyo Itulay sa makabagong panahon Itulay para sa kabataang Pilipino Kayo ba'y may katanungan At hindi maunawaan Kami ang gabay at tulay na magtuturo sa'yo Sa tulong ng teknolohiya At maging ng social media Paaralan ay kusang lalapit sa'yo Tulong edukalidad Subuhin maling impormasyon Katotohanan natin ituro Pag-ularin ang edukasyon Itulay ang gabay sa pagkatuto Itulay edukasyon itatawid sa iyo Itulay paaralan di lalayo sa iyo Itulay sa makabagong panahon Itulay para sa kabataang Pilipino Itulay Gabay sa pagkatuto Itulay edukasyon Itatawid sa iyo Itulay paaralan Di lalayo sa iyo Itulay sa makabagong panahon Itulay para sa kabataang Pilipino Itulay, itulay sa kabataang Pilipino Itulay Itulay sa kabataang Pilipino Itulay, itulay sa kabataang Pilipino Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Ayan, so good afternoon sa ating lahat. It's a happy Monday. Ayan, so good afternoon po muli. You are tuning in sa ating Earth and Life Science e uh, e online tutorial. So we are now on our week four and we are going to discuss ang dalawang target po natin for this session are metamorphism and formation of igneous rocks. So once again, this is Senior High School Earth and Life Science. So ako po ang inyong magiging tutor for this session. My name is Sir Tony, or you can call me Tutor Tony. Yan ang name ko for the, our e session. So nood lang po tayo ng live streaming natin sa, sa mga Facebook pages po natin, Deped EdTech Unit, Deped Philippines, at Deped Tayo, as well as sa ating official Facebook page ng Deped EdTech Unit at live din tayo sa uh, official YouTube channel ng Deped TV. 
So as mentioned dun sa teaser natin kanina, so we are using the pivot module or the pivot module provided by Region 4A Calabar Zone. So for this particular session, gagamit po tayo ng Module 8 at saka Module 9 entitled Changes in Mineral Components and Te uh, Texture of Rocks or Metamorphism as well as the igneous rocks, how are they formed? So actually, learners, my dear learners, saka sa mga viewers po natin, we have already discussed the different classifications of rocks when we had our week two session. So babalikan lang natin yung ibang information, radigo lang din natin. Siyempre, dadagdagan natin ang ating mga kaalaman tungkol sa mga konseptong iyon. So are you now ready? So tulad ng aking nire-request, so kung meron ka dyang ball pin at papel, ready mo na yan. Kung may copy ka ng module, makakatulong din yan. At syempre, kailangan mo din ng presence ng mind at saka ng heart. Alright? So we will be learning different science concepts and at the same time, integrate din natin sa, sa, sa liling buhay or sa totoong buhay later on. Alright? And very important, tulad ng nire-request ko palagi, comment down your answers sa ating mga activities later on. Uh, pwede rin magpa-shout out. Shout out yung mga names ng teachers nyo, name ng schools ninyo. So make sure lang na indicate yung name ng school at saka kung saan location kayo uh, matatagpuan or nanonood ngayon. Or kung team replay ka man habang pinapanood mo ito ngayon. Alright? And alright, so let's have a quick review lang. So last week, we had our week 3 session and we discussed the earth sources of heat. So meron tayong dalawa, primordial heat. Uh, ito yung heat na nanggaling pa or nagmula pa nung nag-start pa lang ma-form ang Earth. So if you would recall, yung proseso nun ay tinatawag na accretion. Alright? And the second one is, suminit yung Earth. na cause yung ng, ng heat na, or ng hotness ng Earth is yung pag-bombard sa atin ng mga space objects like the meteors. The second one is what we call the radiogenic heat. So from the word radioactivity. So ito naman yung mekanismo kung saan nagproproduce ng heat ang mga isotopes na nasa uh, core at saka nasa mantle. Alright? So again, primordial heat at saka radiogenic heat. So good afternoon sa ating mga viewers. So sa Earth and Life Science, very good ang ating mga viewers kasi well represented Metro Manila, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So I hope you're doing fine, you're doing great. So start of the week, let's make this great. We also discuss about magmatism. So pag magmatism is the process under the Earth's crust where formation and movement of magma happen. So sir, saan ba nangyayari yun? Ulit sa asthenosphere. So yung asthenosphere is the lower part of the Earth's crust, lower part ng crust, and then upper part ng mantle. So yung in between. It's what we call the asthenosphere. And as you can see sa ating uh, presentation, nag-rise ba yung magma? So bago mag-rise yan, may tinatawag tayo na partial melting. At magaganap yan sa pamamagitan ng tatlong factors. Or kahit actually isang factor lang dito, makakapag-produce na tayo ng magma. So we have an increase in temperature, a decrease of pressure, and finally, addition of volatiles. Naalala pa ba yung ibig sabihin ng volatiles? When we say volatiles, ito yung mga substances like water and carbon dioxide na madaling mag-vaporize. Alright? Ayan. So, proceed na tayo sa ating session or session objectives natin. So, tayo dalawa. So, first, describe the physical and chemical changes in rocks due to changes in pressure and temperature. So, yan ang dalawa sa mahalagang ingredients para makagawa tayo ng metamorphic rocks. So, ang prosesong tinatawag doon, ang tawag doon sa proses, prosesong yun ay metamorphism. All right? The next one is we have to compare and contrast the formation of the different types of igneous rocks. So since virtual lang to, no, wala sa tayo sa classroom. Kasi sa classroom, usually, ang ginagawa ko dito, meron tayong sets of rocks, mga mineral samples and rock samples, uh, pinapa-observe ko sa students. Pero this time, uh, what I did is, of course, I provided uh, real pictures na ng mga rocks para at least ma differentiate natin yung mga different uh, metamorphic at igneous rocks. All right? So game na ba tayo? Let's start. Ayan, summer na summer ng vibes ni sir. So I hope you're doing great. Kung nagmemoryanda ka man diyan, sige, sarapan mong pagkain mo, pero wag kalimutang <laughs> makinig ng maayos at mabuti. All right? Let's begin. Metamorphism. So naalala pa ba ibig sabihin ng metamorphism? So ayan, very uh, ingre uh, key ingredients natin, pressure at saka temperature. Tingnan nga natin ang mabilis lang ating comment box. Alright. 
Habang naglo-load ang aking isang device. <laughs> Sige, flash na natin to. So what is metamorphism ba? So metamorphism is the change uh, that takes place within a body of rock as a result of it being subjected to conditions. Tandaan, class, metamorphic rocks ay before or dati siyang igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic rock. So imagine that. Yung tatlong klase na yun, pwede pa pala siyang ma- ma-transform or mabago because of pressure, temperature, at isa pang ingredient. Sasabihin ko yun mamaya. Alright? So, ang metamorphism ay nanggaling sa word na meta, which means change, at saka morph, which means form. So, nagbabago ang uh, physical at saka chemical characteristic ng rocks. So, that's why metamorphic rocks are called the change rocks. Okay? Tandaan ha? Change rocks. Pero, they change for the better. <laughs> Alright? Di ba? Sa buhay, kailangan nagbabago tayo for the better. Ayan, so mabilis na review lang. Discuss na natin ito nung week 2. So examples na para ma-refresh ang ating mga brain cells. Ayan, so I'm showing right now yung mga transformations. So yung granite na igneous rock, magiging nice or nice. Magiging metamorphic rock siya. And then because of pressure, then the temperature. Ayan, so yung sandstone na sedimentary rock, naging quartzite. So naging metamorphic rock na siya. And then finally, our last example, yung shale na metamorphic rock na, na transform pa siya into another or bagong-bagong metamorphic rock na ang tawag ay slate. So ganon ka uh, important din yung, ano, yung process ng metamorphism. Because without metamorphism, hindi or matitigil yung cycle natin or yung particularly yung rock cycle na tinatawag natin sa sa kalikasan or sa earth. All right. So let's have the first activity. So before that, shout out lang tayo na mabilis. I can see ayun uh, lagi nating mga viewers from Kidapawan City po. Hello, good afternoon. From Tagbilaran City, I think this one is in Bohol. Ayan, sige, request po natin yan, no? Miss C. C. V. Celine. Ayan, sana may sign language interpreter para sa DepEd TV, no? Pero may mga subjects po tayo for, ano, for our mute deaf na students sa, sa, sa SPED class natin. And good afternoon, uh, Kabadbaran City. Ayan, so hindi ko lang alam kung saan po yun. Hi po, Miss Christina. We also have viewers from Davao Oriental. Good afternoon sa inyong lahat. Ayan. Okay. So ang goal natin dito is identify the words which are related to the process of metamorphism by writing the words on the opposite box. This is found on your module 8, page 5. Sige nga, ano yung mga words dyan na related sa metamorphism? Sige nga, uh, let's make some noise sa ating uh, comment box. Ano yung mga words? Give me some words. On the left side, may mga words tayo dyan. Ano dyan yung mga related sa metamorphism? So I'll give you one. So of course, metamorphism needs heat. Kailangan ng init para matransform, uh, ma ma melt yung mga minerals ng particular rock. We also have uh, volcanic rock. Ayan. So, mamaya, matidiscuss natin. Madadaan natin yung terms na yan ulit. We also have pressure. Okay. And we also have uh, mantle. At saka fluid. Alright. And finally, we have temperature. Okay. Ayan. Thank you sa mga sumasagot. Ayan, si Mark Platon, tama, pressure and heat. So, ang hindi lang kasama dyan is weathering at saka cementation because they are related sa sedimentary rocks. Let's proceed. So, metamorphic rocks, again, they are, there is pressure and temperature involved. At tandaan ha, uh, ang process ay, ang process involved ay ang tinatawag natin na recrystallization of minerals. Okay, recrystallization. Ibig sabihin, nag-crystallize ulit. Kasi nga, galing siya sa igneous, sedimentary, or dati siyang metamorphic na rock. When we say recrystallize, nag-melt ulit yung mga crystals, yung mga minerals, na transform siya into another rock. Alright? Okay, listener po, I'm working from home. Hi po, Miss Eugenia Perez Sevilla. Right. So yung mga geologists and petrologists, diba? remember, petrology is a study of rocks, they use a scheme for metamorphic rock identification. So ganun ka, ano, ganun ka systematic yung mga scientists no, sa buhay. Uh, they use this specific scheme para at least uh, accurate yung identification ng mga particular na, na rocks. So mamaya, madadaanan natin, no, if you would recall, Ayan, doon na muna tayo sa first, sa texture. Are they foliated or non-foliated? When we say foliated, ito yung mga rocks na may layers. Mamaya makikita niyan. Yung grain ng size, uh, grain size, pino ba? Or medyo malalaki yung mga 
grains kapag tinignan siya using the magnifying glass or kapag uh, hinawakan mo siya. Composition, ano mga minerals ang nagko-compose sa particular metamorphic rock? Anong klaseng metamorphism ang naganap? All right? And some notes. Tapos, eventually, finally, i-identify nila kung anong uh, metamorphic rock yung sample na yun. Okay? So before, ang ginagawa ko yun, since nasa Manila ako, ang ginagawa ko is, umibili ako actually ng mga rock samples before. Kasi mahilig din ako mag-collect-collect ng ganyan. Sa pupunta pa ako National Museum. Ayan. So I think may mga geologists doon, they will help you identify no, the different... Uh, Metamorphic rocks or any rock sample that you have using a particular scheme, tulad na pinakita ko kanina. All right? Okay. So let's proceed with the different factors or agents of metamor metamorphism. So we're going to heat, pressure, at saka chemically inactive fluids. So balikan lang natin. So heat, of course, kailangan yan because it provides the energy to drive the chemical changes in direct crystallization of minerals. Kung pag walang init, of course, hindi naman mag-work or hindi naman matatransform yung particular rock sample. Of course, kanina pa natin sinasabi, pressure ay kailangan. So just like heat, as you go deeper sa earth natin, no, uh, pressure also increases at nakakatulong yun para meta ma maging metamorphic rock ang particular rock sample. And then finally, chemically active fluids. Ito yung sinasabi ko na pangatlong key ingredients. So ano ba sir yung chemically active fluids? Can you think of a fluid na very essential sa planet Earth? Sige nga. Volcanic rock. Ayan, pressure. Alright, may mga sumagot pala kanina. So good job. From Antipolo City, good afternoon. Bulacan. From Macario B. Asiso Senior High School, sa school ng wife ko. <laughs> Hello po sa inyo. Ayan. So, ano ba yung chemically active fluids? So, syempre, very essential. Ayan. Water. Tubig. Ganun ka, ka, ka simple eh. Water. Hindi na kailangan ng komplikadong chemical. Water is very essential because it enhances the metamorphic process. Kasi sa water, may mga ions. May mga chemical ions na nagre-react sa particular minerals para ma magpatuloy yung recrystallization process. So once again, the factors or agents and daan, we have three, heat, pressure, at saka chemically active fluids. Okay? Let's proceed. Alright. May tanong lang dito. Kailan po namin makukuha ang ESC? What? This ESC po, please enlighten me. May, may viewer din tayo from, ayan, Bulacan. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Ayan, so balikan natin. So we have discussed already this one. Types of metamorphic crops. We have foliated and non-foliated. As you can see, kita-kita naman yung difference. When we say foliated, but can you notice? Meron siyang layers or bands. May foliation or lineation na tinatawag. And like non-foliated, ayan, parang saktong klase ng rock lang siya. Alright? So, foliated and non-foliated. We also have to review ang contact at saka regional metamorphism. Tandaan lang. So, in science, madali lang yan. We use keywords para at least hindi tayo mahirapan sa pag-analyze or sa pag-interpret ng mga concepts. So, for contact metamorphism, natandaan natin is heat. Mainly by heat due to contact with magma. So, since mas malapit yung bato na yon sa magma chamber or a magma source, natatransform siya into metamorphic rock. Contact metamorphism yung tawag doon. Pag regional metamorphism, so medyo mas malawak naman to yung sakot niya sa mga crust, so kaya siya tinawag na regional. So, ang factor naman for regional metamorphism is uh, pressure. Again, for contact heat, for regional metamorphism, it's pressure. Okay? Ganun lang. Kasi mag mag magagamit natin yung mga concept na yan later on sa pagsagot ng ating mga activities. Ayan. So, uh, differentiate lang din natin, no? Types of metamorphic rocks. Okay. So, non-foliated rocks or the non-layered rocks. Ayan. Mainly due to heat from contact metamorphism. Ganyan yung uh, uh, depiction ng mga minerals or yung arrangement ng minerals. And like kapag foliated, because of a certain amount of force, ayan, nagkakaroon ng certain stress. Hindi naman ito yung stress na naranasan natin. No? Stress refers to force, a strong force that causes the alignment of the crystals or the minerals. Ayan, kaya nagkakaroon ng layers. Okay? So we call that lineation. And ayun, yung lineation na yun is ang responsible, responsible doon ay 
recrystallization of minerals. So, na-recrystallize ulit. Okay? Ayan. So, tingnan na tayo ng mga examples natin ng foliated metamorphic rocks. Okay. Pressure, heat. Ayan. So, titingnan natin yung comment section. Foliated niya. Ayan. As you can see, the knees or the nice. Ayan. Meron siyang very nice <laughs> uh, foliations or layers. The same with phyllite. Okay. Sir, it's pronounced as water pole. All right. Okay. Thank you po sa comment. Miss Eugenia Perez Sevilla. Noted po tayo dyan, ma'am. Knees and phyllite. We also have schist and slate. Ayan. So, meron din siya mga foliations or layers. Yung slate, hindi lang ganun ka-visible, pero meron siyang mga certain uh, kind of layer. So, hindi naman totally talagang visible. So, minsan yung mga rocks na, so, kailangan mo siyang lapitan para mas makita mo yung foliations niya. Some examples naman of non-foliated metamorphic rocks are horned fills. And, ayan, so, di ba commonly nakita natin uh, white marble. So, this one, we have pink marble. Ayan. So, marble is very important kasi ginagamit yan sa mga statues, sa mga structures natin. Also, have quartzite. Ayan. Naalala ko ito yung sample ng quartzite namin sa school. Medyo makinang-kinang pa yan. Para siyang ginto. Napagkakamala niyang ginto ng mga sudyante ko. So, quartzite is a non-foliated metamorphic rock. We also have a scarn. Ayan. Ganyan ang itsura niya. Ayan. So, sige. Tingnan nga natin kung na naintindihan ang ating mga previous concepts that we have discussed so about non-foliated at saka foliated metamorphic rocks. Number one is an easy question. Which of the following words is not associated with metamorphism? Anong dyan ang hindi kailangan or hindi associated para mag, uh, maganap ang tinatawag nating metamorphism? A. Heat B. Mantle C. Pressure or D. Weathering Okay, Marikina City, good afternoon po sa inyo. From Kidapawan, ayan, lagi may nanonood sa akin, from Kidapawan City Division. From Te Trece Martires City, good afternoon po sa inyo. Ayan. Alright, so let's flash the answer for number one. Do number one, uh, the answer is letter D, weathering. So weathering, if you could recall, no, weathering is, uh, ang tawag dito, the breaking down or the weathering of uh, breaking down of rocks into smaller pieces so associated yon sa sedimentary rock so the rest are associated with metamorphic rocks number two what is the effect of heat and pressure in rocks as there is an increase in depth so habang lumalalim tayo sa earth as we go deeper some across to mantle letter a foliation uh, foliation surfaces shine Low-grade metamorphism, the grain size becomes coarse, or letter D, uh, increase in mineral alignment. Sige nga. Tingnan natin ang mga answer from our comment box. Wala pang sumasagot sa number two. Sige, hintayin lang natin. So tama si Laarni, si Virginia, at saka si Sophia earlier sa number one question. They answered the weathering. So number two, the correct answer is, of course, letter C the grain size will become coarse. Number three, what are the main factors for contact metamorphism to happen or to occur? So like again, sinasabi kanina, air and water ba? Heat and reactive fluid. Uh, C, temperature and water. Or letter D, pressure and temperature. Ano yung dalawang main factors sa ating meta, contact metamorphism? Contact ha, hindi regional. Contact metamorphism. Okay. Nice try. The correct answer is B, heat. Kanina, di ba? Contact metamorphism is related to heat. And then, of course, yung reactive fluid na tinatawag natin kanina. And number four, foliation or lineation, yung mga bands, mga layers kanina, happens among deformed rocks due to ano yung dalawang, sinabi ko ng dalawa, <laughs> dalawang factors na yun. So, eliminated na siyempre yung ano, eruption of magma from the mantle, tsaka increase in temperature in the surrounding area. Naku, pati hindi pala, increase in volume of water as the rock's depth increases. Alright, sir, nasabi mo yung sagot. <laughs> Number four is a pressure and recrystallization of rocks. 
Ayan, sige. Mamaya, ha, lagay nyo yung number ng item natin, ha, para ma-identify natin kung anong particular item ang sinasagot ninyo. But thank you for answering, Wilfred, Tang Veroy, La Arnie, Abby, and Miss Virginia. Number five. Summer is walking down the river when she sees an unknown metamorphic rock. So may nakita siya na metamorphic rock. Which of the following characteristic can best help her to immediately identify the type of metamorphism that the rock underwent using a magnifying glass? So gamit niya lang ay magnifying glass. Anong particular factor or characteristic ang kailangan niyang tignan or pwedeng maging indicator using a magnifying glass? A. Foliation. B. Grain size. See the name of the rock. Of course, hindi na yun kasi hindi niya nga alam, di ba? And letter D, the kind of mineral present in the rock. So, mahirap din yung D kasi hindi naman niya totally alam kung anong klaseng mineral yun, di ba? So, foliation ba yan or grain size? May pahabol na sagot si Miss Des Castillo sa number 3, letter D. Alright, thank you so much. Number 5, the correct answer is, of course, yung grain size. Kasi nga, you're just using the magnifying glass. Kung coarse ba yan, or fine, pino ba, yung mga uh, minerals or yung mga crystals. Ayan. So that's uh, would be all about metamorphism. We'll be now proceeding sa ating second objective, which is about the formation of igneous rocks. So ang igneous rock ay related sa mga volcanoes, mga tectonic activities natin. Yung mga pahabol na sagot. Elisa Jovili, ayan, Miss Virginia, very active. Thank you so much. Ayan, formation of igneous rocks. So, ano nga ba ang igneous rocks? Ayan, so from the word or the Greek word ignis, which means fire, kasi may fire or may heat element, and it is formed by volcanic activity. Ito, ah, kanina kasi recrystallization sa metamorphic rocks. But this time, since mag-originate siya into, from magma or lava, Ang tawag ay crystallization. So, nag-crystallize or uh, nag-solidify nag, nag siya uh, at the same time, nagiging ano siya, mas compact into uh, rocks talaga na matigas or uh, uh, fully compacted siya, sa so fully rock na siya. Alright? And it is classified further by origin, texture, and mineral composition. If you would re uh, remember, meron tayong igneous rocks na ang tawag ay extrusive at saka intrusive. Extrusive, labas, is form on the surface, so galing siya sa lava. Okay? Pag intrusive naman, form siya underground, sa tinatawag natin mga plutons, sa ilalim ng mga surfaces ng volcano, malapit sa magma chambers, ang tawag sa kanila intrusive or the plutonic rocks. Sige, uh, review lang natin ng mabilis din. So may mga terms eh, no? Tandaan lang, extrusive, labas, magma yan, syempre, above the ground when lava flows or explodes from a volcano. Uh, examples are obsidian and basalt. Ang tawag sa kanila ay volcanic rock. So, nang galing siya, ay niluwa siya ng volcano. Papunta sa surface ng earth. Kaya, volcanic rock. Pag intrusive naman, nabubuo siya underground or the geologist uses the term plutons. So, galing siya sa magma. Okay? Examples are granite and gabbro. Texture, ayan. So, meron kasi tayong mabilis na pag-cool or mag-solidify siya. And just like this andesite that we have right here, it produces fine grains and small crystals. Bakit, sir, fine grains ulit? Kasi nga, mabilis yung pag-cool niya or pag-tigas niya into a rock. So, wala nang time yung mga crystals or yung mga minerals na mag-solidify uh, pa. So, ang napoform lang ay very small crystals. And this is associated with, with extrusive igneous rocks. Kasi nasa labas, mas malamig. Okay, compared, I mean, in terms of temperature, mas malamig, ng, mas malamig compared sa the second classification which is intrusive, so sa loob, no? Ito naman, since mainit, mabagal yung cooling or slow cooling process, produces coarse grains just like just like this uh, diorite, ayan, nakita naman, di ba, compared sa andeside, mas malalaki yung mga crystals niya kasi nga, since mabagal yung pag-cool, uh, may time para yung crystals mag-coagulate uh, or mag-ipon-ipon, makaka-form siya ng mas malalaking crystals or coarse grains. So again ha, rapid cooling, extrusive, slow cooling, intrusive. So nagkakaiba sila sa laki ng crystal or ng kanilang mga mineral components. Ayan, so we also have, ayan. Okay, may mga pahabol na sagot. Sa list 
Ina, Eric Sabado, good afternoon, and Jay B. Serrano. So I have here uh, a com table of comparison ng intrusive and extrusive. So we will not go over this in detail. So you can take a screenshot of this. And you can also find this in our module na ginagamit. So yung, or if you want yung PowerPoint presentation, you can download all the e 2 Live PowerPoint presentations natin sa ating uh, DepEd Commons na website. So type nyo lang doon and search nyo Senior High School Earth and Life Science. Provided po lahat ng ating modules at saka lahat ng mga PowerPoint presentations na ginagamit namin mga teachers. Ayan. So, tingnan na natin yung mga examples. Kasi ito yung object objective talaga natin, di ba? Intrusive. Mga common examples natin yan. Intrusive, again ha. So, na-form sila sa loob ng uh, volcano or sa loob ng earth. So, we have granite and diorite. So, as you can see, anong klaseng kristal? Malalaki. Kasi slow yung cooling process. We also have gabbro and pegmatite. Ayan yung mga common na mababasa yung mga rock samples sa mga references at saka sa mga websites. And speaking of websites, kung interested talaga kayo malaman in detail, ayan, uh, lagi kong sinasabi sa mga sessions ko, since college, favorite ko na itong website na to geology.com. Ayan. So meron kayong mga specific rock samples as may mga details ang siya gawa. Very detailed, very good, uh, reliable reference natin online. Extrusive naman tayo. So yung mga crystals nito maliliit or totally walang crystals na na-form sa sobrang bilis ng pagka-form niya as an igneous rock. So basalt, lagi natin narinig kasi malaking portion ng crust ay meron tayong basalt. And of course, ang favorite ko rin na obsidian. Very glassy, very fine, halos walang crystal or actually wala ng crystal eh. So sa sobrang smooth, sa sobrang bilis mag-cool ng, ano, ng lava. We also have rhyolite. Ayan, mamaya, makikita natin yan sa ating exercise. The rhyolite and the scoria. Ayan. So, since extrusive, malilate lang yung mga minerals nila. We also have pumice. If you'd recall, no, yung pumice, ginagamit yan sa mga, <laughs> ngayon, sa mga plantito at saka plantita, no? Nilalagay yan, hinahalo yan sa ano eh, sa mga soil mixture. Pumice is, if you would recall, it is the lightest known rock. Tough is also an extrusive igneous rocks. Ayan. If you have question, ha, uh, ano lang, please comment lang sa ating comment section. Ayan, very important then Types of igneous rocks based on composition. So, I'll be introducing four terms right now. So, listen up last. So, we have felsic, intermediate, mafic, at saka ultramafic. Okay, so nagkakaiba lang naman sila sa, ayan, as you can see, may arrow dyan. From light to dark, so in terms of composition at saka sa color, ang tinitingnan kasi dito ng mga geologists or ng mga petrologists then of course, is yung amount ng silicon oxide or yung silica content ng mga rocks na ito. Doon lang naman actually nagkakaiba. And of course, magkakaiba rin sila sa major mineral content. So anong klaseng mineral ang kailangan para maging or ma-form ang mga particular kinds of Igneous rocks. Okay, tignan natin sila isa-isa. Again, felsic, intermediate, mafic, and ultramafic. Let's begin with felsic. Kanina, nakita nyo, no? Very high silica content. Mag-start tayo sa very high silica content. So, since very high, tandaan lang, pag masyadong madami or very high yung silica content niya, ang color niya ay, anong nakita nyo? Very light lang. Okay, so from light to dark tayo. Ang pinaka-composition na ay quartz at saka feldspar. Best examples natin ay ang granite at saka rhyolite. Okay, that's felsic. Next is the intermediate igneous rocks. So kanina very high, si felsic, si intermediate, high silica content, around 53 to 65%. Okay, the color is around gray, grayish in color, just like the diorite at saka andesite. Okay, so that is intermediate igneous rocks. Next is we have the mafic igneous rocks. Ito, ito naman, mag-start na siyang mag-lower ang silica content. Nasa 45 to 52%, so half na lang, no? So the color, according to the information provided, is black. And our best examples, ayan, kanina ka pa siya nasabi, si Gabro at saka si Basa. So they are classified as the mafic Igneous rocks, low silica content. And finally, we have ultramafic igneous rocks. Ito na, low kanina, very low silica content. So lower than or less than 45% of silica. Ayan, very dark na yung color. And they are rich in pyrite.
Eutroxine at saka Olivine. Ayan. Ang example natin is yung Peridotite at saka Junite. Ang Junite is actually a classification din ng ano, parang na-derive siya from Peridotite. Ayan. Nabasa ko lang sa isa geology.com. Ulit, tandaan natin ha. So, balikan lang natin mabilis. Kaya hindi kayo ano, malito. So, we have Felsic. Ayan. Felsic, Intermediate. Mafic at saka ultramafic, nagkakaiba lang sila sa kanilang silica content and other major mineral contents. So the more the silica content, the lighter ang color. Pag the, the lesser the silica content, the darker yung color ng igneous rock. Ayan. So we are now ready. Nakita nyo na yung activity kasi. Alright. Sige. Comment, comment na lang tayo ulit. So module 9, page 10. So meron tayo example dito na activity. So, supply lang natin ang mga missing information to complete the table. Again, it's found in module 9, page 10. Ayan, the pivot module. Hello, Melody Perez. So, ang ga, uh, goal lang natin is, meron tayong rock sample. So, natin mahawakan. So, virtually lang, tignan lang natin. So, bawat column dyan, provide lang tayo na information. Actually, iba provided na. So, sa bawat sample, Meron tayong time, dalawang missing information. So, type of rock sa second column, intrusive ba siya or extrusive? Second column, galing ba siya sa magma or lava? So, ang logic lang naman natin dyan, kapag uh, intrusive, galing siya of course sa magma. Pag extrusive, galing siya sa lava. Kasi nga, nasa labas na, extrusive. Ang cooling rate, fast lang yan or slow. So, saan ba mabilis at saka mabagal? Kapag extrusive, fast na yung cooling nun kasi na surface ng air compared sa mga intrusive na slow ang cooling process. Sa crystal size, you may answer small, large, or meron kasi tayong mga no crystals na napoproduce sa sobrang bilis ng kanyang pag-cool or pag-solidify. Alright. Sige. Number one, the answer is lava. So, rhyolite is an extrusive igneous rock. So, extrusive, galing siya sa lava. Cooling rate, fast or slow ba tayo? So, extrusive, syempre, Fast ang cooling rate niya. And the crystal size is small. So wala nang time yung mga crystals para mag-aggregate mag pa, mag-ipon-ipon, mag-kumpol-kumpol kasi nga mabilis yung cooling process. Again, let's answer the second example. You may answer in the comment box. All right. So the second uh, rock sample is the gabbro. Sige, gabbro is an intrusive igneous rock. As you, as you have seen in our presentation earlier, intrusive siya. So, since intrusive, galing siya sa magma. Ayan. Melody uh, JM. Hello. Good afternoon. And the cooling rate is low. The large, there are large crystals produced. Next is our famous <laughs> granite or granite. So, granite is an intrusive igneous rock. So, obviously, kapag uh, granite, intrusive siya, so galing siya sa magma. Ayan. Rainiel Bulak Ronquillo. Hello, good afternoon. Ayan, crystal size niya would be large. Ayan, very visible naman. Kasi nga, intrusive siya. Next rock sample is, kanina, nakita nyo, si Scoria. Scoria is an extrusive igneous rock. So, pag extrusive, of course, galing siya sa lava. Cooling rate. What can you say about the cooling rate? Alright. So, since extrusive, fast ang kanyang cooling rate. And just like obsidian, no, scoria has no crystals form. So, sobrang bilis ng kanyang pag-solidify. And speaking of obsidian, obsidian, siya pala ang last rock sample natin. So, obsidian is intrusive or extrusive. Of course, it is an extrusive igneous rock. So, galing siya, of course, obviously, sa lava. The cooling rate is fast. And kanina, sige, as you have observed in our presentation, so sobrang fine, di ba, ng obsidian, para na siyang glass. There are no crystals formed sa obsidian. Alright. Okay. Let's have the, the last two statements that we have for the last two questions, which of the following is or are the processes in the formation of igneous rocks? Sige nga, while I'm looking on my other device. 
sedimentation, recrystallization, solidification and crystallization, solidification and recrystallization. Igneous rocks, so we're talking about igneous rocks. Checking the Deped Philippines. Ito tayo tumingin na comments. Ayan. Good afternoon, Leia Llanera. So the answer for this one, of course, is letter C. Solidification and crystallization. Kanina kasi sa metamorphic, di ba? Recrystallization. So nanggaling kasi siya from igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. So this time, we're talking about igneous rocks lang. Solidification and crystallization. Next, number two, how does the amount of silica affect the color of igneous rock? Sige nga. So we're talking about the silica content. So wala na si A tsaka si D. Diba? So ano tama dyan? C or D. The lesser the silica, the lighter the color is. Or the more the silica, the lighter the color is. Mm -hmm. Siyempre, letter D. The more the silica, the lighter the color is. Ayan. So, ayan. We come to the end of our session. So, last time, kung napanood niyo yung session natin, replay man yan or live. So, nagkaroon tayo ng uh, advice from a, from a volcano. This time, we'll be having an advice from a rock. So, ito yung tinatawag natin na be inspired in hashtag be blessed na segment before we end our lesson. Ayan. So, ano ba yung advice sa atin na isang rock? So, that's rock, sabi niya. So, first, start each day with a clean slate. So, you wake up in the morning, you leave your worries behind, you pray, di ba? So, kumbaga, start of a new day, you begin with a joyful heart, with a grateful heart. The next one is, try your hardest. So, sa bawat pagkakataon natin, whether you are a student or a professional already, you have a family already, sa mga students natin, so we have uh, different challenges, di ba? You try your hardest. Next, stay grounded. Grounded. Yeah, stay grounded. Lagi tayo humble lang. Alright? So kahit tayo ay strong, matigas, kumala, strong looking, para ng mga rocks, we stay grounded. We have to be humble palagi. And be well-rounded. Pag sinabi naman natin be well-rounded, so parang rock cycle, no? Kumbaga, saan man tayo dalhin ng panahon or ng pagkakataon, let's try to 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 perform our best. Kung saan tayo magsashine, gawin natin. And then finally, live in balance. So kailangan uh, balance, social life, personal life, love life. Kung may girlfriend ka man ngayon, or boyfriend, ayan. And sa, kung saan mang, ano, particular na part ng buhay natin. So live in balance, di ba? Everything should be balanced. Again, start each day with a clean slate, try your hardest, stay grounded, be humble, be well-rounded, and live in balance. And yan, ang, yan ang mga advice uh, sa atin ng isang rock. Let's rock. And that ends our session for this afternoon. So kapag may question pa kayo or ano kayong gusto nga i-clarify, you want uh, a little help, you can email me at sirtonymaipa.gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook and I also have a YouTube channel. Ayan. So uh, promote lang din natin na mabilis, no? So starting next week, I think, or before mag-end ng April, we'll be airing the new episodes, mga brand new episodes ng Dep Ed TV. So, isa po rin po akong teacher broadcaster. But so for Debe TV, I'm doing uh, physical science naman. So, I hope you support every uh, Debe TV learning episodes. Mapa, uh, sa TV man yan mapa, mapapanood or naka-upload din po yan sa, sa YouTube channel ng Debe TV. And that's it. Thank you so much. Ang next po natin ay si Tutor Cat for Media Information Literacy. Once again, this is Sir Tony Maipa. Uh, stay safe, be grateful. Ayan. So let's rock lang. Ah. <laughs> be strong and let's accept all the challenges. And see you next week. Bye bye. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. 
Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Itulay Free Online Tutorial Session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines Social Media Accounts. Paalam!